with us now is Susan Rice, former ambassador to the United Nations and former director of President Biden's Domestic Policy Council. She is now a surrogate for the Harris Walls campaign. Ambassador, it's great seeing you. I thank you for your time. I know the vice president is going to be delivering her closing argument speech Tuesday at the Ellipse. We we're just talking about that now in Washington. It's the same spot where Trump gave his speech on January 6th before the Capitol riot. What's the symbolism of that location and of the speech there? Well, good to be with you, Jose. Thanks for having me. I think the speech next Tuesday uh, on the Ellipse is a critical opportunity for the vice president to deliver a closing argument that contrasts her vision for where she wants to take the country, which is a forward-looking, aff affirmative and optimistic vision that unites the country, that is full of concrete pro programs and policies that will benefit the American people and help them ensure that, that costs come down and, and that their freedoms are respected and protected. In contrast to Donald Trump, who used that same uh, location four years ago, to launch the greatest assault on our democracy uh, since the Civil War. Um, and, you know, Donald Trump has been very clear in the closing days of his campaign that his presidency will be about revenge and retribution and going after what he frighteningly calls the enemy within, using the United States military against his political opponents uh, or any American who might disagree with his approach to governing. So this opportunity for the vice president to uh, reiterate what she will bring as a responsible uh, rule of law respecting commander in chief, in contrast to Donald Trump, who launched a insurrection on the Capitol from that very spot and is promising to do worse in his second term were he to get one, uh, is a very important opportunity for her to uh, say her final piece to the American people. Yeah, you know, and how important is it in the just very few days that remain as, you know, many people, millions have already started to vote. Uh, how important is it for the vice president to give her very clear vision of the future and then balance the look back at the past? Well, she's been very uh, careful and, and, and very thorough in uh, the, the two, three months now that she's uh, been at the top of the ticket to lay out her, uh, Vice President Harris's vision for how she will govern as President of the United States and to make clear that she represents a new generation of leadership. She's got, uh, you know, very concrete uh, and, and useful ideas um, for how to help Americans not just struggle to, to get by, but to really get ahead in a meaningful way. Her policies on making housing more affordable, bringing down the cost of groceries by a federal ban on price gouging, her commitment to strengthen and expand uh, Social Security and Medicare, uh, and ensure that the F Affordable Care Act uh, remains in place and that prices for health care can come down for average Americans. Her plans and policies are very concrete and specific, and they are about the future and about the American people, as opposed to Donald Trump, who remains only about himself uh, and, uh, and has the worst kind of vague policies, uh, such as across-the-board tariffs on 20% uh, of all goods coming into the United States, which would cost the average American family an additional $4,000 a year. So the contrast in policy couldn't be greater. But then there's also, uh, Jose, the contrast in temperament and, and the purpose of governing. We heard General John Kelly, uh, Trump's uh, chief of staff, four-star general, say very clearly that, that he saw uh, in many respects, a fascist in Donald Trump. Uh, and that's what uh, Jim Mattis has said, uh, General Mattis. That's what uh, General Mark Milley said. Um, and we've heard Trump's own words, that, that he wants Hitler's generals and he wants to govern like a dictator and, and terminate the Constitution and turn the U.S. military on his opponent. So the, the choice couldn't be more stark. It's about a forward-looking, inclusive uh, affirmative vision of what kind of country we can be when we turn the page on Donald Trump versus a dark uh, past that, that Donald Trump wants to re replicate and intensify going forward. 
Uh, Ambassador, I want to turn to foreign affairs, if I could. I know you were a national security advisor when, among other things, the United States uh, dealt with Iran for that nuclear deal in 2015. Here's what uh, former President Trump said about Iran in an interview with Hugh Hewitt this morning. If necessary, will you use force to stop them from getting the nuclear weapon online, Mr. President? Yes, I would. So there's a very clear statement by the former president about the Iranian regime and nuclear weapons. What do you make of that? Well, in, in some ways, I make very little of it. You know, that it has long been the policy of the United States, from President Obama, who I served, to uh, President Biden, and, and, and going forward, that the United States will preserve all options uh, and keep all options on the table to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon. Uh, we had accomplished that uh, substantially uh, through a, a, a nuclear deal negotiated that set Iran's nuclear program back uh, by, by considerable margin and ensured that there were um, uh, inspectors and cameras and, and all of the like to see what Iran was doing. Donald Trump recklessly pulled out of that deal, had nothing to replace it. And now Iran is closer to having a nuclear weapon than it ever has been before. So keeping all the options on the table is sound policy. The, the, what is not sound policy is Donald Trump cheerleading, uh, you know, an Israeli preemptive uh, attack on Iranian nuclear facilities, which he did, uh, you know, a week or two ago. Uh, that would result uh, in, in untold, uh, you know, destruction uh, and a, a wider regional conflagration and war that's likely to draw in American personnel and forces since we are based all over the region. That's reckless and dangerous and classic Donald Trump. But to affirm that the United States policy is to uh, leave all options on the table to prevent Iran from having a nuclear weapon, that's not innovative. And uh, Ambassador, finally, just interesting your your um, description of what Donald Trump, uh, his policy is vis-a-vis -vis Israel and Israel's uh, response to having been subjected to hundreds of uh, missiles and drones and uh, all kinds of different devices uh, by Iran directly and then through its proxies, Hezbollah also. What do you think the policy uh, towards Israel should be by the vice president? And do you think it would be any different from the policy that President Biden has been carrying out since the October 7th massacre in Israel? Well, Jose, first of all, let's be clear. Uh, the United States under President Biden and Vice President Harris has not only stood by uh, Israel in, in its efforts to defend itself from two direct attacks uh, from Iran, but we participated in repelling those attacks and ensuring uh, that the consequences were de minimis. Uh, and the vice president and President Biden have been very clear uh, that we will do what is necessary to help Israel defend itself against Iranian uh, attacks, Iranian threats, and Iranian proxies. Um, that's a different question, though, uh, in the moment from what to do about the war in Gaza. Now that uh, ya that Sinwar has been uh, eliminated, that um, Gaza, uh, it, that the uh, Hamas has been vastly degraded uh, in the wake of its horrific attack uh, on Israel last year on October 7th, uh, the vice president has been very clear uh, that it is past time. Uh, for a ceasefire that enables the hostages to return home. They've been in captivity, suffering in horrific circumstances for over a year. It is well past time uh, that they come home, that the Gazan people uh, have the opportunity for the, the humanitarian assistance that they so desperately need and deserve, um, and that they, they can begin the process with external help of, of reconstructing Gaza uh, under leadership that does not involve Hamas, uh, and that the Palestinian people can truly credibly have the prospect uh, of their own state uh, living side by side in peace and security with uh, the Jewish democratic Israel. That's the objective, uh, and that's uh, the, the policy that the vice president has clearly outlined. Uh, but it is time for the war in Gaza to end. Uh, and for the suffering to end and for the hostages to come home.